In this exercise, we're going to learn how to clean a polygon layer using the Edit Tools GeoWizard. This particular layer was created using a GPS unit. So to begin, we're going to launch GeoWizards by clicking right here. And we get the GeoWizards pop-up. We'll make sure that Polygon is the active tab and we'll select clean polygons click go it needs to know what layer we wish to clean it's going to be in this particular case the layer called block so I'll select that and then it asks me to specify an output feature class or shape file I am going to call it block underscore clean now in your particular case you need to make sure you give it a name that helps you identify it because in this particular folder, your working folder, you might end up with hundreds if not thousands of, uh, of uh, GPS files and you want to make sure, you want to make 100% sure that you know what you're dealing with at all times. So you might want to give it the owner name or the, or the GPS project name, whatever it is that you go by. Anyway, I'm going to click Save and then I'm going to click Next, and then I'm going to click Next again, and I'm going to click Finish. So we'll let it process, and it says Function Completed Successfully. I'll click OK to remove that pop-up. You'll see that a new layer has been added. I'm going to turn that off just for a quick second, and there's our old layer underneath. We really don't, do not need that anymore, so I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to turn this new clean layer on. Now, I'm going to right click on block clean and left click on open attribute table. And you can see that there are two records in our database when there's only one polygon in it. So what's going on there? Well, there is an error in it and we need to identify that error. Which one of these two is the one that has to go? And then we're going to delete it. So to do that, I'm going to close this attribute table just for a second. I'm going to launch Xtools Pro. I'm going to come up Table Operations. And I'm going to click on Calculate Area, Perimeter, Length, Acres, and Hectares. We'll get the Calculate tool popping up. And from there, it asks us to select the layer to measure. Well, by default, see, now, see how I have this one highlighted? It's the active layer. So by default, it gets listed here. And it has a uh, coordinate system attached to it and it's important that you do have a coordinate system attached to it otherwise you're going to get area results but they're not going to be accurate so it's important that you have the right coordinate system in this particular case the GPS software has a feature in it that allows you to attach a coordinate system with it so it saves us the hassle of having to do it here anyway the desired output units we need to change from inches to meter. You just scroll down you see meter and click on it. Now the rest of the settings are fine. We're going to go with those. We'll just click OK at this time. And just that quick it's been done. So I'm going to right click on this block underscore clean layer and then open the attribute tab. Scroll to the far right and you can see that it has uh, added four columns of data. One is the perimeter in meters. One is the area in square meters, one is acres, and the last is hectares. We'll concentrate on the two hectare values. If you look at them very closely, one is 0 0.000744 of a hectare, and the other is 7.097624 hectares. Well, it's the second one that's the accurate one. Just come over here and compare it to what the GPS device measured, 7.097 hectares. So the numbers are pretty much identical. It's this top one, which is very small, which is obviously an error. So if I just click on that, highlight it in blue, you notice I clicked on this little arrow in this gray area to the left of the record, and then I right-click, and then I left-click on Zoom to select it. And if I just close this attribute table, well, you're presented with that bow tie that was created by the GPS unit. Now this one was visually identifiable with your, by, by your eye. If 
but in many cases these things are so small you can't see them and the only way you can track them down is using the software in this particular case it found one and now we need to remove that and to remove that you do that by launching an editing session now if your editor toolbar is not present which in my case it is not, you need to go find it and launch that first. So I'll go View, Toolbars, scroll down to Editor, click on that and bring it up. Next, I'll go Editor, Start Editing. And you need to ask yourself, is the layer you're working on, Block Underscore Clean, listed here? If it isn't, click on another source and I did I clicked on the second source because by default it selected that first one and in the second source you can see block underscore clean now can you imagine if you had multiple ones called block underscore clean you'd be confused here as to what to go so that's why I said earlier it's important that you give them a name that you can readily identify with so in this case I'm just gonna click OK and our editing session has started now by us previously selecting this polygon in the attribute table and zooming to it it's highlighted for us and to get rid of it I'm just going to right click inside the polygon and then left click on delete and that quick it is gone now we need to write those changes to the database so I'll go on editor stop editing it'll prompt me do I want to save my edits I'll click yes and then let's just zoom to this layer so we can see it all. I'm going to close the editor toolbar again, get out of the way. And now we're presented with a single polygon that has been cleaned. It is now ready to be um, uh, merged with this deduction layer. We have to subtract that area from this total area. Oh, by the way, I'm going to just confirm to you by opening this attribute table that there is only one record in there now. So that proves that it is now clean it's one record the air has been moved or the air